better representation of, of what I'm talking about. Not knowing that my strap was probably twice as big as anything I'll climb in. Um, so anyway, this tree here, as you can see, is pretty good size. I, I can't get my arms around it, so we've got pretty substantial trunk here. And it goes that, that big all the way up. Uh, obviously, if I wanted to get in a bigger tree, get towards the top, it would be a little bit smaller. So, but so if I know that this tree is bigger than what my platform strap will handle, I'm going to go ahead and just tie this on. And then once we get up there, we'll take and throw this around the tree. Got branches in the way, that's why I'm having a hard time there. Okay. So here again, we have plenty. We could even do a bigger tree. That's good to know. So anyway, after shooting that first video, uh, I came to realize that the larger strap probably wasn't the most effective way of doing this because it just is a little bit too big. If you get in a tree Say something like um, that one there by the, the Tahoe. This thing is yeah, it's pretty big. It's a big trunk tree, and if that goes straight up, then by the time you get up to the top, it's still going to be fairly large. So. Um, after I started messing around with this the other day <coughs> and uh, thinking about my uh, my tether and stuff, the tether just wasn't uh, going to cut it. So I would either one have to make a bigger tether or or just climb smaller trees. And I think the the easier part of that uh, equation would be to, just to uh, climb the smaller trees. So. This tether or this uh, this strap here is just a little bit too long, so we went ahead and we made a different one. And what I came up with was this short one here. So this is a, uh, a lifeline, basically off of a uh, uh, tree stand harness. It's basically just a loop to loop through your your harness and then. I cut it off and redid the stitching which I showed you here in the video. So we're gonna take a, a doubled up, we're gonna tie this off on the back side here. Make a knot. Okay, and then we're gonna go let's try the let's try the two first. See if it's gonna work. We'll go right there <clears throat> and see if we can punch that through. Oh, yeah, that'll punch through nice. There we go. Now we'll come back through, and once we go through, we're going to loop into our loop, back into our loop here. Why didn't that pull all the way through? Oh, there. It wanted to. It didn't, though. Anyway, so we got a good start there. And we're just going to go ahead and make a couple passes. Top to bottom. Again here. Go to the top, and then to the bottom. Okay, that'll make that nice and tight. Again, through the top, and then the bottom. I'm sure there's a better way to sew this, but uh, I'm not. Uh, 
didn't pay much attention in sewing class in high school or anything like that, so my sewing skills are probably not efficient enough for this, but we're going to give it a try here. We'll just keep going through until we get long enough that we like how long this eye is going to be. Just keep looping this through. Coming through the back, coming through the front. So you'll have a short stitch on the back and a long stitch in the front. And then you can reverse that going back if you wanted to, but I'm not going to get that fancy with it. All I need is for this to hold this eye together. I might have to redo this front, I think. For some reason that did not. So here you can see what I'm doing is just folding this twice out and then uh, take and go through the top, out the back, and then back through the front, right underneath where we went through. Okay, and I think that's going to do there, so I'm going to go again through the top, and then back through the bottom, and go in between my loop that I just made, pull that tight, and then we can tie that off. there. Just double that up. Overhand knot kind of. There we go. Pull that tight. We got lighter here. We'll burn that off and uh, tap it so that stays in. Let's go ahead and cut some of that off so we don't have all that to burn. There we go. Hopefully you're kind of following what I'm doing here. It's not, it's not too difficult. So this one here, we're probably going to have to just burn and hope that that holds for now. Ooh. Okay, that should hold. So there we got our little three-quarter inch loop. We got our big loop on there, and then we got this three-quarter inch loop that we just made. I think I'm going to put another. Yeah, we'll try this. It doesn't have to be huge. So then we'll take, make that loop, and then we're going to sew those two together just like that. Sew those two two-inchers together to make that loop. And then we'll cut it off. And that's all the longer I'm going to make it is about a foot, maybe a foot and a half. So we'll go ahead and get some more string made up here. I wish I could sew like that. That's, that's obviously a machine job, but I'm sure if you took your time, you could also pull that off. Cut that there. Get that to the side. I know there's probably a lot of guys out there like myself that thought I will never need to know how to sew. Huh? Guess what? Men. It's a handy trait to know. And I wish I knew some of it better. Even if like if you're doing leather work and stuff, it's the same same uh same scenario. Making holsters, making uh knife sheaths. 
that uh, sewing sewing knowledge comes in handy for those things. All right, so we got our knife there, or our knot there. We'll cut that off with the knife. We'll double that up. We're gonna go back to our knot or our splice here, and we're gonna we're gonna make that loop. Sew that together, and I think we're gonna start on this end here. Go ahead and punch that through. And then we'll punch it back through right beside and back through that loop or that knot that we made. And then pull it down tight. And that's going to be our start. And then we can do a cross pattern or whatever pattern we want to do. But so. I think we'll try to keep this a little, little closer together this time, get a little better stitching. Anyway, here we go. So there's our there's our eyelet for the platform side. We're gonna go ahead and cut this uh, extra off and probably burn it. So I'll try to cut it as close to my. probably want to sew that up <clears throat> so it doesn't come undone but there again you got so when you bring this around you can loop this eye through there loop your other eye through that tie that in and that gives you another two foot or so on your on your strap that you normally would not have I think that's gonna work a lot better. So, in my front yard here, we have a, it's raining out here, so I'm trying to keep my, trying to keep my camera as dry as I can. So, right here we have a, a tree that uh, is about the perfect size to demonstrate on. Get that down so I can. So anyway, we've got, uh, You know, if you're going to be climbing larger trees, you're obviously going to be running into uh, this diameter up top. Or a little bit larger even. So what I came up with was this strap system. I'm basically just going to loop it through here. Run this eye through the other eye here. Pull that tight. Then, uh... I have that all adjusted accordingly. We'll go ahead and put our loop on here and pull that tight. Now that way with this shorter strap I don't have to reach clear around the tree or pre-adjust it as I'm up in the tree. It's kind of a pain to try to do up there. So what I do is I just made this strap shorter obviously. And there, you can see. It bites in that tree really well. And that's a double two inch. Uh, that's a two inch uh, band. So it's not gonna break on you. And 
you'll be nice and supported with that. So you're you're not gaining a lot like you did with the uh, like you did with this strap here. But like I said, the problem with the bigger strap and the bigger bigger trees is you're going to have a really hard time getting around and adjusting. It can be done, but you're going to have a hard time getting around and adjusting that strap on the back side of that tree because with that strap this big, it's going to put your it's going to put your uh, your buckle at the back of the tree. So you're going to have to. If you're not DRTing, it's going to be about impossible on sticks to get around and grab the other side of that uh, that uh, strap, so a buckle. So anyway, you know this this is something since I DRT, this may be something that I keep in my pouch uh, for backup. You know, if I do want to hunt a bigger bigger diameter tree, this will allow me to do it. But for the most part, I think this strap itself is going to be more than efficient for any trees that I want to climb. Um, like that, that tree that I showed you in the video that I climbed yesterday. I threw that up about 40 feet. I have about an 80 foot rope and that rope was just touching bottom when I started. So it was a... Uh, pretty good sized tree and uh, we went up quite a ways so we were probably a good 35 foot up I was only about five foot from the branch that I was that I was tied into so um, it was a fun climb and it's it's nice to be able to get into those bigger trees and get higher Halfway. but uh, that rope of mine is is a pretty pretty chunky rope it's a 16 mil so it's uh, it's pretty bulky and uh, you know it makes you feel safe up there obviously but there's a lot of weight there too especially with the 80 foot rope so eventually I will be cutting that down to uh, 11 mil predator line and uh, I'll get that from Westpur ropes and uh, we'll uh, just make a smaller one for for the more more uh, natural tree climbs that we're going to be doing, obviously when we're hunting, this is going. You know, this rope here I'll turn into a turn into a practice rope, um, and then just use my predator line for for climbing out in the field. That way, it kind of saves on the wear and tear on it too. So, anyway, that's what we've got for you. I've got uh, got to get this camera inside. It's starting to come down pretty good now we're under this tree so we're shaded pretty much but don't want to ruin my my gear before we get started for the season so anyway thanks for watching Publix Eye Outdoors stay safe out there everybody in your hunts and we will catch you on the next video